gone on dry without any preparation, like, no. Sorry. Next. Hi Booktube, it's Van and me last week book and today we are wrapping up the first half of June 2021. So, we're at the middle of the year, that's wild, and I had a reading slump. Quite dramatically actually, so normally mid-month wrap up we're like, right okay so we've got eight books to talk about, I've literally got four. Um, didn't go well, but there is a reason for that and it's actually technically in a roundabout fashion a good reading and it's because I read too many good books right at the beginning of the month. Um, so we'll start right at the beginning. The first book I finished this month was Neon Gods by Katie Robert. Now if you've seen my mid-year tag thing um, or seen me get on about it on TikTok or literally any other platform whatsoever, I absolutely loved this book. I gave it five stars. It was perfection. So Neon Gods is a Hades and Persephone retelling. Persephone has just been notified that she's marrying Zeus and she's like fuck that and runs away uh, to be protected by Hades. It was just so unbelievably good. So I've already said this before right and I don't mean it as a slight against the romance genre as a whole because I'm here as part of romance booktube because I love it, it's one of my favourite genres. But with romances sometimes I feel like there are certain parts of the story that have to be sacrificed or like not focused on as much, um, whether it be the plot of the book itself, character development, uh, providing three-dimensional fully formed characters, um, whatever. But Neon Gods hit every single point on the book content requirement scale for me. Like the plot was immaculate, the characters were three-dimensional fully formed and I totally was vibing with both of them. Um, there was character development, particularly in Hades. The scene setting and everything like that was so descriptive and perfect. And the smut was on point. How? 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 It's very rare that I managed to come across this. But it was perfect. So the romance in this for me was great. Hades is the king of consent and I'm not just talking about in a sort of sexual context but just in everyday life no matter what they're doing or where they're going he's constantly making sure that she's happy with whatever's happening checking in with her periodically to say are you sure you're still okay with this um blah 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 and that was so refreshing um like even if he sensed the slightest hesitation the slightest teeniest tiniest bit of hesitation he was like whoa let's just dial this back a bit are you sure? Um, and Persephone is the strong heroine that we need because she was headstrong enough and wanted to solve all her problems by herself and didn't need somebody there to fight her battles but knew when she needed the help and went to accept the help. So like that, that was what I needed. Obviously we had the kind of like bratty uh, dynamic there happening but I, I, uh, loved it. I was 100% rooting for the couple from the very beginning, the moment that they met, it was just so good. And Hades character development, you saw him gradually like making parts of himself vulnerable and um, sharing parts of himself with Persephone. It was just perfect. I know I have used the word perfect like 20 times now but it totally sums up the book. I've actually filmed an individual review of it that I, I'm going to post so I'm not going to talk about it too much but yeah, five star read. I recommend it to anybody who reads romance. It is just perfect. The second book I read in the first half of the month was Act Your Age Eve Brown by Talia Hibbert. <laughs> so when I read a book series what usually has happened is I've enjoyed the first few books in the series and then they've just gradually gotten kind of me. I'm over it, right? Not with the Brown Sisters. So, I've already raved about the first two books, gave them both five stars, said that they were perfect. So I thought, surely, surely we're not going to have a hat trick here and Eve Brown's going to be a five star as well. It was. This book was so good. So. Eve Brown, the youngest of the sisters, has been told by her parents, like, you need to kind of, like, grow up, get a job, like, 
be an adult um, or else we're gonna cut you off so she's like right okay so she has like been in and out of like different um, careers just nothing holds her attention for too long and she just gets kind of sick of it and moves on to something else so she drives past the B&B &B and decides to apply um, to be a chef there but Jacob the owner like it's not that he dislikes her it's just that he dislikes the idea of her as an employee thinks that she's going to be really skittish and unprofessional and all of that sort of thing but then she kind of like knocks him down with a car um, and then kind of just like takes the job because she just doesn't leave she's like well you're incapacitated so I'm just going to do everything and it turns out that she's actually really good at her job as a chef and she's just amazing so obviously the Brown Sister series has a reputation for having wonderful representation and inclusion in it and again Eve Brown did not disappoint so both Eve and Jacob are on the autistic spectrum so their grumpy sunshine dynamic is relevant to the fact that they are both autistic. So, if so, for people who aren't really familiar with autism and don't really know much about it, not every person who has been diagnosed as being on the spectrum has the same traits and behaviours um, and capabilities. So, it's a not it's not a one. It's, def it's not a one-size-fits-all diagnosis and you can see that laid out very clearly without explicitly stating that that's the case because Eve and Jacob have very opposing personalities so, um, and through that you can see the fact that everybody's traits aren't the same when it comes to autism and also there was, again it's not explicitly stated in black and white, but you can see through Eve's actions that she is doing the sort of standard strategy of masking. Strategy is not the right word, but masking where you're kind of like not playing a role but trying to cover up that part of yourself and fit in wherever she is. Um, so I like that and also um, I don't remember if Eve had been diagnosed in adulthood or if she hadn't been diagnosed yet but again it's very common in women who are on the autistic spectrum that they don't actually receive a diagnosis until adulthood um, it's super super common um, which I've seen happen where they have been diagnosed in adulthood or if it's parents that I know, the boys are much easier to get a diagnosis for than the girls. Um, so they were all really kind of subtle things that were woven into it, but they were kind of glaringly obvious at the same time. Um, again, that might just be again that might just be because I do have a familiarity with autism that um, I noticed these things and picked up on them. Um, but I think that it was really well done. I loved it. It was so good. Um, and again, I would recommend this to anybody who was into reading romance. The whole Normally, if somebody recommends a book to me and says that it's a romantic comedy, I don't really, I don't really put much weight behind that statement because usually, if I read something that is a romance and is supposedly a comedy at the same time, or is funny it's not funny like there'll be a smirk or a smile here and there but it's not funny but the brown sister series is actually genuinely funny as well so you have like this perfect combination you have the pure wholesome romances this one is a grumpy sunshine um close proximity workplace um, so you have a whole variety of tropes across the, the trilogy. You have a mixture of different representations, whether it be health or um, race or sexuality. Everything is in there. They're all so funny and they are also really spicy. So, Miss Howard, what sorcery is this? So yeah, uh, highly recommend that, highly recommend the whole series, go read them now. The next book that I finished at the beginning of this month was Trust Six Venom by Penelope Douglas and this is a sapphic bully romance, um, it's also a kind of sports romance um, 
I thought I was going to really dislike this for a very specific reason and it's because I don't like bully romances whatsoever. I don't like the power dynamic that I have read in um, bully romances in the past. It's just really put me off and it's too... Anytime I read it, it's written too much like an abusive relationship and it makes me really uncomfortable and I can't continue with it. But I thought I'm really going to push myself and try and read this because I was really looking forward to it coming out. Um, and I really, really did enjoy it. I will say that I will say that the bullying in this is quite like nasty. Like these girls are not like fucking about when they're being nasty to each other. It is horrible. Uh, so yeah, th that didn't vibe with that. So content warning for bullying and homophobia. Um, there's also child death. There's also suicide. Like there's a lot. Um, so yeah, the bullying like content was kind of heavy or oh, in revenge porn um an attempted sexual assault not between the main characters um so that really was kind of uncomfortable so it was kind of uncomfortable but at the same time it wasn't that bad that i had to put it down and walk away from it um again like with neon gods the plot of the book was good the characters were fully formed so the two main characters clay and olivia they hate each other um, and it's just constant, spiteful, snarking, like just typical teenage girl bully behaviour. And Liv is openly out um, and Clay is saying that she's straight, presenting as straight and that's all there is to it. She doesn't want anybody to know that she has any kind of feelings towards her own sex. Um, so she's trying to keep that quiet and as a way to kind of like mask that she projects her own kind of internalized homophobia on everybody else um and she's literally the worst but 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 and this is where character development and like really good character work like is super beneficial to a story you get to see that the real reasons why Clay is the way that she is and you get a real insight into who she is as a person. Her extracurricular activities out with school that she uses as a coping mechanism to cope with her feelings and things that are happening in her life um, was surprising. Loved that it was included. I thought it was really interesting. Um, so you actually get an idea of who she is. It's not one of those characters where you hate them but they have no redeeming qualities, they don't have a redemption arc, you're just expected to be happy that they get a happily ever after. It's not like that at all. Um, it actually, you get to see it unfolding throughout the course of the book. The book is quite long, I'm not entirely sure how many pages was in it, but it was quite long, but it didn't feel like a slog to get through. Um, so it was like fine just going through it. But it was quite long, it did take me a while to read it, but it was worth it, it was really good. Um, I had a really complicated relationship with their relationship, like, part of me was like constantly, um, part of me was constantly like rooting for them, and then part of me was just like, it is not worth it. If you are just going to keep going through these endless cycles of we hate each other, actually we love each other, we hate each other, actually we love each other, like that, it, that, I'm glad that that eventually stopped because it was a bit much. Um, I was kind of just like, can the two of you please just accept that you like each other, you love each other and just go and ride off into the sunset and be happy. So I gave this one five stars as well um, and it was really good. What I would really appreciate would be in this book the side characters in the book weren't just there as side characters you actually like they were integral to the plot to keep things flowing and I loved Liv's brothers and I would love it if there was a I would love if Trisix Venom was the first in a series where we follow the brothers as well I'm really really hoping that Trisix Venom does go down really well across the board because I feel like a broken record keeping saying this um, and I know I'm not really being helpful myself because I haven't done a recommendations video yet for them but nobody is talking about female female romances it's constantly male male romances um, and I'm filming this on the 20th so all of that shit on 
book talk that you've probably heard about by now has just happened and I think we need to de- like get away from that whole like disgust at sapphic books but like being all hot for the male male romance books to me that makes me feel uncomfortable particularly because I've said before on here I don't read male male romances written by women because I just feel kind of uncomfortable about it and also I'm not saying I'm taking it I'm not saying I take it personally right but to see people trashing female female romances is kind of hurtful in a way imagine pulling this shit during pride month of all months because as a bi woman it makes me think right so if I'm in a relationship with a man it's fine but if I'm in a relationship with a woman it's not fine that's essentially what people are saying you are saying I don't like this it's gross I can't relate to it because it's female female but you can relate to something if it's male male that is what is called fetishization fetishization yes um because you're getting off on it i know that you would complain about men watching exclusively lesbian porn and obviously there is a very vast difference between porn and romance novels but you'll you'll get the sentiment in a sec by saying it's misogynistic and fetishizing but if you but the purpose of pornographic material is to make you feel aroused okay so while a romance novel isn't porn and porn isn't a romance novel they overlap in the sense that certain books will make you feel levels of sexual arousal so if you're getting that arousal from male male romance you're fetishizing just the same way as the straight guys watching lesbian porn are fetishizing lesbians oh that might be a bit of a bitter pill to swallow but it's true so I don't know where I was going with that comment I believe I was saying that if it gets the success that I hope it does then more people will be writing and publishing female female romances and they'll gain the traction that they deserve okay next next on the list (laughs) the last book I finished this month and um that was stepbrother dearest I believe it was called by Cassie Cathy? Cassie Donahue. And this was a taboo stepbrother stepsister romance. And it wasn't good. I gave this one two stars. To be honest, it was lucky to get two stars. I don't even remember why I gave it two stars because there is nothing positive I can remember about this. So I listened to it in audio and it was a stepbrother and a stepsister who meet each other after a long time apart at a funeral. Um, and something had happened before they had separated and went like different ways and the two of them end up hitting it off again at this funeral and it was just boring I didn't feel anything about or for the characters like (laughs) no no and it wasn't the fact that they were step siblings that I don't care about that I can fuck with but there was just nothing it was so flat didn't feel any kind of relationship between the two of them didn't feel any kind of chemistry between the two of them and also this guy quite clearly wasn't interested in foreplay and everybody needs foreplay in their life instead this guy's just like fucking going on dry without any preparation like no sorry and i just didn't like it it was bad um i didn't enjoy it no no nope no so that was what set me on the road to a slump so didn't love that oh I just realized that I said that that was the last book that I finished this month it wasn't before that um I listened to (laughs) Priest by Sierra Simone (laughs) on audio so that was the May pick (laughs) for the Taboo Book Club and then I was not anywhere remotely ready for that I knew from reading reviews and seeing it recommended in booktube, booktalk, wherever that it was spicy 
that it was quite smutty, but I wasn't quite expecting like that degree because the onslaught of um spice <laughs> was not what I was prepared to receive. Uh, admittedly, I'm not saying I didn't enjoy it, quite the opposite, I really did enjoy it, I gave it five stars, but I couldn't rate it the same way I would rate a romance normally because I didn't feel love there. So Tyler meets the woman whose name I can't remember at this current moment in time when she's in doing confession um, and then he becomes attracted to her voice but then they kind of hit it off and she is very open about what she like. She's very open about her sexuality. She's very open about talking about her past and all of that sort of thing. Um, he's trying to hide the fact that he is embarking on an intimate relationship with her because obviously he's a priest. He's a Catholic priest so any sort of sexual interaction is a no-no. Um, but I didn't really find that love connection like it was very lust filled and very lustful and I was 100% present for the smut um, it was just I didn't really find the love in it so I rated it more how I would rate erotica rather than how I would rate a romance um, because I feel like Sierra Simone deserves the stars for that because it was fucking hot like with a capital H and I have to say props to Sierra Simone because she was very inventive with um, Catholic church paraphernalia but I can imagine that if you were reading this and you were Catholic you would feel so much guilt reading it and like I can't even imagine what it would be like like going into chapel the next day because like I was thinking about this book for days after I finished it so I'm just imagining reading this on a Saturday night chilling, waking up on Sunday morning and having to go to chapel and listen to your priest while thinking about that book for the previous night before, do not envy that. Do not envy that at all. I think that if you have read this and managed to go back to your place of worship, you deserve a medal, a certificate, a statuette because I don't think I could ever look my priest in the eye again. So those are the five books. Well, technically four and a half because that stepbrother one was a novella and it was tragic. Um, so hopefully the rest of the month, so far we're on the 20th, so the rest of the month is progressing a lot better than the first half did, but I am going back to work tomorrow, so my reading's probably going to slow down a bit this rate anyway. So as always, any important links will be in the description box along with links to all of my social media. You should come and follow me. We can talk about books. It'll be a fun time. And I hope you're having a nice day. The weather's a bit tragic here, but you know, we're still alive and you have to celebrate that. Let's just keep on keeping on. Um, everything's going to be fine. We're all in this together. We're all in this together. <laughs> so on that happy note i'm gonna scoot and organize some booktube stuff that i need to organize um so stay safe happy reading and i'll speak to you later bye